Every time he went near someone, it went beep, and he got their clothes, and they got his. He looked <laughs> at Mum's big cake. My favourite page, it tells you about wind, which is actually really cool. So the Trang Bai Wai reading probably started about four or five years ago and we were looking at raising um, our reading outcomes for students. We were you know, below Australian um, mean scale score and we we're also below Queensland and we thought that's not acceptable for our kids. I think reading is important because so you learn the words, like someone says a word when you are at work and you say, what does that mean? And then they might say, you should have learned that in school or at reading time. The principal at the time, Peter Tanza, had been at a principal's conference and had heard um, jo Dr John Monroe speak and he came and worked with us and trained um, some literacy mentors. The curriculum is essentially a knowledge pathway and unfortunately a lot of teachers believe that that is sufficient. They don't see the need to actually get inside the brains of a group of children and to scaffold them, actively scaffold them to learn and make new links. The Gonski money that's come into schools, we've used that to hire um, additional staff and teacher aides, and we've really trained all of our teachers and teacher aides around the pedagogy of what a reading lesson needs to look like and the questions and the strategies that they need to be working on. Plump, pretend you're a big, plump chicken. At times it doesn't look like they're reading at all. They read a sentence, they unpack it, they pose questions, they unpack the vocab, they talk about that, they use it in, um, in context, they have to put it into a sentence. Paraphrasing, which I'm working on very strongly at the moment in my classroom, is the ability for the children to say back into their own words what they just read and that helps me with their comprehension. So if they're understanding what they're reading or not, comes out into their paraphrasing. If they've got absolutely no idea. We go back and we talk about the words that are in the sentence and make meaning out of the text together. And that might mean synonyms or new words to be learnt, um, actions for them to remember words. Show us your retractable claws. Here and out. I'm extending their vocabulary and teaching them how to comprehend and paraphrase all at once. Underpinning this whole approach to learning and to literacy is, is, is a very explicit understanding of how people's brains learn. Close your eyes and we are going to visualise. You're not dreaming, Mummy, they're real chickens. We're saved. We're not going to starve. With our visualisation, as we're reading, I always say to them, make a movie in your mind because it makes it clearer up here and it gives them an image of everything that they will be reading. And we talk about what did they see. And then I say to them, they need to say their responses in full sentences as well, which helps with their writing as well. When you paraphrase a sentence, you have the original form of it in your brain, you know, when you read it aloud. Then when you paraphrase it, that's a second form of it in a particular area of your brain. When you visualise it, you're actually coding it again in a third area of your brain. So you've got three takes. They are so engaged in the reading process now. There's actions and there's movement and there's dancing and there's new words being learned all the time. And it's just like that real joy of learning in my classroom. Oh, impudent. Uh, I looked it up and it actually said snotty nose in the thesaurus, which was weird. <laughs> That's a new one. Okay, lifespan. I've spent, everybody show me your arms. The way that we run our way of reading program at our school is interlinked through every topic and subject that we do in our school. The one that we read today was about foxes and the reason that I did that is because we're doing animals in science but I also thought we could use that, pull out some facts about fox so they can use that in their own writing. Life span means how long a fox... Who said that? Well done Eli. Life span is how long a fox stays alive or an animal, anything. So it doesn't matter what the topic is, we can visualise anything, we can paraphrase anything. And I think that's the beauty of that program is that it just encompasses every aspect of school into one and that we can use it in any way that we want to. One particular student that we have here is um, Hannah who is blind. She talks about how her learning has been empowered because of others listening to other students visualise. It makes me get a picture in mind and that's the reason why I enjoy reading. Traditionally reading programs have been an area of low engagement for students with disabilities 
um, the new reading program has really changed that and I think probably the structure of the reading program has helped that. The structure follows the same sequence from week to week and kids know what to expect with their routine so it allows them to be more active participants. Through this process I've learnt that it's the team. It's the team with the data that counts, otherwise you're just another person with an opinion. I've actually got your English marks for your class. Attitude towards data from our teachers has changed. At first it was like data was being um, done to them, whereas now they own the data. So, you know, they, they're keen for their results. Those year level meetings that we have, you know, data is presented to them and they are just rushing in here to be able to read it, to look at it, to be able to talk about their kids and what progress they're making. The data that I take out of administration gives me my learning goals for each child and I group them into like goals and that forms my reading groups. And then each week I have a goal based on the gap, I guess, of where they are and where I think they could be, and then I use the guided reading program to bridge the gap. Exclusive means only one trait, and that's how we're going to remember it. Put your finger up and go, exclusive, exclusive. exclusive. I have seen some of my own children be in the C band to an A band, move from last year to this year, just on the solid reading program. Like I said to you, we were below Australian Mean Scale School and Queensland. Last year we were at Australian Mean Scale School for both three and five. Not only are our student outcomes improving, but I think our satisfaction levels with our teachers uh, have improved as well. All on the same page. When I get a child who's been in another classroom, they slip straight in, it's consistent. If I've got a grade that's come up from last year, straight in, they know exactly what I expect from them. They know the language. Remember, it's a bit sneaky and it's a bit sly, everybody. Let's do it together. Rub and go cunning. At the moment, we're really working on our kids being able to apply those skills independently. Basically, what we're doing is we're scaffolding them enough so that they're going to be able to train their peers and train other children in how to run a reading, a guided reading lesson. First, we'll start with visualise. Imagine it's 400 years ago. You know, we're also very conscious of the fact that maybe some of this funding might run out and we might not be able to employ the amount of staff that we do at the moment. Um, and also too when they go to high school they need to be able to apply these skills independently as well. We've given those kids some tools that they can go off and, and do it in many other subject areas as well. So we've applied it to literacy but we could equally well apply it to, to numeracy or, or, or to learning in any area because it's essentially what the brain does. There's no rocket science with what we're doing here. It's around teaching students how to think and how to learn. Oh, I'm rancid. It's like another word for disgusting. That's pretty much all the new words, but yeah, I think that's all the new ones.